And William in Dublin, Ireland, watching us on freespeech.org. Hey, William, welcome to the program. Hi, Tom. I just wanted to call and confirm that uh, since the founding of the Republic, uh, we had been, and I wasn't alive, obviously, back in 1922, but the uh, um, uh, historical narrative has been that the water was a common right and that it would never be uh, privatized. It would never even be taxed. Uh, we don't even have water meters uh, on the, the homes. And this does appear to be a rather... Uh, a rather blatant attempt to seize uh, this this common good, and uh, and it is planned to be privatized as a way of of paying down the outrageous debt that the government surrendered or agreed to with the IMF and the Troika. That's astonishing, and that's why six hundred sixty thousand people have not signed up to have their water metered and pay that one hundred and sixty euro tax, right? That that's exactly right, and uh, I mean I. Personally, I, I feel that uh, there are repairs that are needed to the Victorian pipes that were put in over 100 years ago. Um, but there are ways to do it, such as putting water meters on a, a newly sold or newly constructed house and phasing it in over time. But that doesn't get them to the privatization that they want to do and the seizure of that uh, common wealth, that public uh, common good that they want to monetize. Wow. Are there other parts of the commons that the EU and the IMF are encouraging the Irish government to sell off, to privatize, to give to the billionaires? Not that I have firsthand experience of. Uh, I can't speak to that, Some. Yeah, okay. But, but water was always free in Ireland. It's not even metered. It's a public good. These, uh, so I'm assuming that all the water systems in the country are publicly held. Are they, are they locally publicly held, or are they nationally publicly held? Uh, I believe they're nationally publicly held. Uh, as I say, we none of us have water meters on our, our homes or our flats, and right. that's the process now of going and putting them in and then being assessed a tax when it goes in, and uh, it's been quite well discussed and known that it's, it's the first step in what would be a privatization sell-off. Yeah. Being out there in the eastern Atlantic, um, you know, the, the time that I've spent in both Ireland and, and uh, uh the UK and, and England, um, and Scotland for that matter. It rains a lot. I mean, you've got all that, you know, moist air coming off the... It rains, uh, almost, it rains almost every day in, in Dublin. The, the old saying is, if you don't like the weather, wait an hour or two, it will change. Right. So there's so, lots of uh, water. The it's amount not... of water is not a problem. It's just that the, the pipes do need repairing, right. and there's not any money budgeted for that, uh, because particularly because of the, the banksters and uh, what they did in terms of of ripping off the Irish public. Right. Yeah. Uh, I believe that Ireland, like Greece, was the recipient of credit default swaps from Goldman Sachs to make their debt look less bad. Uh, yes, there were games that were played in the convergence, the run-up to the uh, the uh, euro. Um, and there was a lot of investment money that came in from the EC, uh, which caused a boom uh, there were very specific grants. Uh, I, I know living there, it was amazing to see the two-lane highways and, and almost many many of our roads were gravel roads and two-lane highways being converted into big four-lane motorways. Um, and that was known. It was big signs that it was EC money. But uh, there were some games played. Uh, but, you know, Ireland before the crisis was running um, a comfortable surplus uh, it, it was not in deficit like Greece. Uh, by the way, so was Italy. Yeah, the banks just took it down. William, we're out of time. Thank you for the call. Thanks for, for watching in Ireland.